asked to speak a question. Put these Richard Dreyfus films in order of their first theatrical release, starting with the earliest. Tin Men, Mr. Holland's Opus, Jaws, American Graffiti. All right, time's up, everybody. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest Dreyfus movie, American Graffiti, then Jaws. Tin Men, Mr. Holland's Opus. That's the right order. Let's see who did it in the fastest time. The winner is Dan. Back, see how he does. I'm pretty sure it's 93, so I'm going to make that my final answer. Guts ball, my friend. Take Guts a shot. ball all the way. Let me repeat this. Is this your final answer? This is my final answer. You just won a million dollars! <laughs> Quite a night, last January 16th, that's what happened right here in the studio. Your mom came down the stairs. Boy, was she excited, huh? She was, it was great. And now, uh, tonight, you're back, and uh, you're joined by your brother, Adam. Hi, Adam, how you doing? Great, Regis. All right, well, nice to have you back. Thanks. We had a lot of fun with you. I remember you were, well, you wanted to meet the model, Elle McPherson. That is what I said. Yeah. <laughs> and I uh, could tell by the look on your face, you really meant it. And, <laughs> and why not? Who doesn't want to meet Elle? But you did hear from her, didn't you? Yeah, I got, a, I got a, uh, an autographed picture from her a few weeks ago. Uh, what did it say? The beach. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it said. Something like, you know, love and kisses L was how it was signed, though. I don't remember the... That was nice. <laughs> if it's real. Who do you think sent it to you? I... It came from New York, so... You're Come looking at it, baby. Just, yeah. You're looking at it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I did. <laughs> it was L. McPherson. All right, Dan, it's great to have you back. You know the rules, you know the lifelines. 50-50, ask the audience, phone a friend. Want to do it one more time? One more time. Let's do it, okay? Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with Dan Blonsky. <laughs> Here it is for $100. According to a popular phrase, you should strike while the what is hot. Iron, anvil, hammer, your dinner. Uh, strike while the iron's hot. Yes, the iron is hot. You got to strike. Two hundred dollars. What legendary figure is known for riding naked through the streets of Coventry? Lone Ranger, Headless Horseman, Lady Godiva, Evil Knievel. I didn't know the Coventry part, but uh, I think Lady Godiva is only a naked rider there, so I'll, I'll say Lady Godiva. Lady Godiva, the right one, rolled naked. $300 coming up. Which of the following punctuation marks looks like a period above a comma? Ellipsis, exclamation point, semicolon, colon. My favorite punctuation mark has always been the semicolon, so I'm thinking semicolon. Yes, it's a good one, semicolon, the answer. $500. Where is the commemorative statue of the film character Rocky Balboa? Denver, Philadelphia, Jacksonville, Houston. Went to law school in Philadelphia. Uh, that's where it is. Right on the Art Museum steps, right? Rocky okay, Balboa. Got the steps in. Oh, okay. We're going for one thousand dollars. Which of the following is a Jewish place of worship? Synagogue. Mosque, cathedral, kiva. Uh, I think I'd get in trouble on this if, if I missed it. Uh, it's a synagogue. Yes, of course, it's a synagogue. You're right. Okay, so Dan Blonsky's gotten through the first five questions. He's up to $1,000. Incidentally, what is the charity you're playing for? I'm playing for Miami Bridge uh, Youth and Family Services, which is a charity in Miami that uh, gives shelter for runaway and abused kids and also does family counseling. Ah, 
And incidentally, you were just named a president of that organization a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, I've been on the board a couple of years, and I, they asked me to be president actually before all this millionaire stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, congratulations. All right, sounds like a good charity. We continue now. You're going for $2,000. Here it is. What is the main ingredient in sauerkraut? Broccoli, cucumber, lettuce, cabbage. Um, I occasionally get a uh, crowd on my dog at the, at the ballpark, uh, and uh, that would be cabbage as the main ingredient. Final answer? Yes. Cabbage, the right answer for 2000. $4,000 right now. On the television series Get Smart, what part of Maxwell Smart's attire doubled as a phone? Hat, shoe, watch, tie. Can't really see everything. Uh, Pointing to the shoe? Shoe. Shoe final answer? Yep. Shoe, the right answer for $4,000. $8,000 and still all of his lifelines are with him. Here it is. George Pullman is best known for what improvement to railroad transportation? Sleeping car, standardized gauge, rail brake system, bullet train. George Pullman. Um, I'm pretty sure that they're, they're Pullman cars positive, but I'm confident enough to say uh, A. Sleeping car? Yeah, I think that's final. What it is. Yeah, I'll make that final. Pullman sleeping car, the right answer for $8,000. We're going for 16000 when we come back, he's seven away from a million. Playing with Dan Blonsky from Miami, Florida, one of our three one million dollar winners, and became a major celebrity in the Miami area. Was throwing out the first pitch at the Florida Marlins game, and right. the Heat wanted you for a charity trivia event. Right. And you got five out of five too there, right? Yeah, I hit, I hit, I hit the sports stuff. I'm good at that. I but, haven't gotten one yet. I'm no, waiting. not yet. Okay, so here you go. You're going for sixteen thousand. All of the lifelines are with you. Just like old times, we're seven away from a million. Let's play. The saying, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, is attributed to whom? Winston Churchill, Sigmund Freud, Groucho Marx, Andrew Carnegie. Cigar is just a cigar. Let me use the 50-50. Want to narrow it down by two? Okay, computer, take away two of the wrong answers for Dan. One wrong answer, one correct answer left. Groucho, Sigmund. Those are the two I was sort of debating between. Um, yeah, l l let, me, let me say Freud. Freud, final answer. Final answer. Something that sounds like Groucho, but it came out of Sigmund Freud. You're right, 16,000. <laughs> We're six away from a million. Two lifelines left, $32,000. Which of the following games is most closely related to the English game Skittles? Darts, ping pong, bowling, shuffleboard. Thirty-two is a big one. Um, let, let me let me ask the audience for some help. Okay, audience, we need a little help here for Dan. On your keypads using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Well, there you go. 39% feel it's shuffleboard, and then 29% say bowling. Dart's got 17, ping pong 15, kind of a scrambled vote here. Uh, I, I kind of thought it was shuffleboard, so 39% um, isn't a huge number, but it's, it's the majority. Um, or was it the largest group at least? Uh, so I'll, I'll say shuffleboard. Shuffleboard, final answer? Yes. My gosh, it was bowling. I'm sorry. Audience kind of left you down a little oh, bit, well. but Dan, 
You leave with a 1,000, you star. Okay, good luck to you, pal. Skittles. Skittles, who knew? Certainly not our audience. And now we've got to keep on going, so filling Dan Blonsky's seat is our old friend from West Virginia, Doug Van Gundy from Marlington, West Virginia. Remember him?